Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on SPY the Qs and IWM. And in this video, I have two bearish and two bullish trade ideas, so stick around to the end. So jumping right into our S&P analysis, you'll really notice here that we've done nothing. We've just gone sideways this entire week. I mean, sure, value is slightly lower, but in terms of the overall balance area that we talked about in the midweek market update, we're just right back in that area. So technically, we did have a look above and fail back into the range. But, you know, at this point in time, I don't really see us breaking out on, you know, a, a massive move to the upside or to the downside in the remaining two trading days of the week. If we just check out our S&P sectors, I think this is is sort of a hint, if you will. We always talk about the largest winner, so that was going to be our energy sector, up about one and a half, but as we know, it's not really a huge or necessarily important piece of the S&Ps, and leading to the downside was actually our heaviest weighted sector, tech. So how can the heaviest weighted sector be red, but we still end up with a green spy day? Well, I mean, let's let's just actually take a look, right? So if we go to financials, our next heaviest weighted sector, they're up about half a percent, and on the day, a nice green candle there. And I think that, you know, this here's the situation, right? Tech was to the downside, but XLF was to the upside. This is a pretty impressive rally here. So if the XLF has a chance to pull back, that gives the XLK, because it had its pullback day today, essentially, a chance to pick up the slack and keep the S&Ps moving higher. So think of rotation, again, as a healthy thing for the markets. Again, I, uh, we'll just cover XLV because that's another one of the uh, heaviest weighted sectors. If we do something like this, I mean, Check that out. We had a little bit of a failed breakout, but once again, we're back at the that, that breakout area. If we move higher, I don't necessarily see why XLV wouldn't move back into some of those recent swing highs. And again, just covering XLK, here was the little bit of a pullback. I mean, it really wasn't a red day, right? At the end of the day, it's just a pullback in a controlled uptrend here. But if the financials decide to take a break, it allows the tech sector essentially to, after this pullback, again, this is picture perfect scenario here, to pick up the slack and continue continue moving higher once it's taken a little bit of a breather, right? So in my estimation, again, linking it all back to our S&P analysis here, I don't really see SPY taking any crazy move to the upside or to the downside, rather just continuing to balance in this sort of range that we've been chopping around for quite some time. Let's go ahead and move over to our internals now. And again, if you're not familiar with this screen, feel free to check out this video linked up above on the right-hand side. Uh, it's going to teach you what this screen is, how to use it, how to set it up exactly like this right here. But what I found most interesting so far these two trading days is that on Tuesday, right, we had a positive volume read, but the S&P actually fell lower. And here on, on Wednesday, we technically had a red and negative volume read, but we did see a rally, right? So what that's telling us is that the majority of stocks, although they were moving higher, right, to support this move up in the S&P, they could not take out or move higher than yesterday's close. And that's evident in the advanced decline line as well, right? Although it was moving higher, uh, you know, a majority of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange were not taking out that prior day low or, or trading back above it. So, you know, what does this mean? I th again, I think it's just supporting the theory that we probably see some more balance. It's not necessarily like everything was just a huge bullish day out there, although the SPY was green. It was more like a sideways day, right? And that's evident in the tick as well. If you check out this move to the downside on Tuesday, again, that felt like stronger, sustainable selling. And it was just coming back down into that range. I don't necessarily think it was, you know, stronger sellers ready to, you know, short this thing into the dirt. But again, we have to give them a little bit of credit. They were able to keep value a little bit lower. And we'll talk about that on the uh, market profile section in just a moment. I do want to talk about this small cumulative build to the upside on the tick as well. If you just compare the two, obviously they weren't the same in magnitude. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at here is just, again, the fact that we have push and pull. And I don't think it supports the theory, essentially, that we'll see any large breakout in one direction or another anytime soon. So moving over to that market profile now, again, here is our our balance area. Um, if we do something like this, using some of our value area lows as targets, again, that's just being the shaded yellow portion of the volume, right? So here we go. There's all our targets. I mean, we didn't even make it all the way down to the low end of balance on the look above and fail back down into range. So all things considered, again, I think the market just is pointing to more balance. I'm sure you're sick of me saying that by now, but that's essentially what it looks like, right? The only thing that we can really take away here is the fact that we have value developing lower, right? That is a bearish thing, technically. If it was, you know, neutral, it would be developing sideways. If it was bullish, 
bullish, obviously it would be higher, but in the overall context and the larger scheme of things, we're still stuck within that balance range that we just sort of highlighted. There are no sort of market profile deficiencies, right? We have a good low here, uh, not the most amount of excess that you would want to see, but it's decent. It's not a poor low, uh, a decent high here. This is a poor high. Uh, and, at, you know, while we're talking about this set of highs up here as well, let's just remember the fact that if we go back to our thinkorswim charts and pull this up in full screen, uh, I just want to remind you that the all-time high was still technically set in an after-hours session, right? So it generally, the market does like to set the all-time high, the true all-time high, in a regular trading hours session so more market participants can be involved, deem if that's a fair or not price. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean that we have to go back and revisit that 39.59, but it's one more thing to just kind of tuck away in your tool belt, if you will. So in terms of where we're going, again, probably sideways within this overall range. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting an upside or downside target on uh, SPY specifically. You know, maybe if we move lower, I would probably be interested in buying this area of market structure at 30, uh, 385, just about, we'll call it. Anything underneath, we did talk about the fact that the gap fill kind of opens up as well as support trend line and 50 SMA after that. All right. Moving over to our cues now, we'll move through these a little quicker and then get those, into those trade ideas. Cues, uh, you know, this one was actually in my estimation, a better move, a more structured move than what we had on SPY because we came back in and revisited that prior market structure and bounced from there instead of kind of midway of the range. So I really like the fact that we're holding on to that 330 as support. It looks good as, you know, as good of a pullback can be. I do think more sideways action is in store. I wouldn't be overly bullish or bearish on this one until we either break all time highs and continue or sort of fail at this key market structure 330 uh, to target that gap below us here in the chart. In terms of IWM, this one looks the best. Um, as a viable pullback, in my opinion, because we did repair market structure and we formed a beautiful hammer candle here on the daily time frame. And it was on decent volume too, right? You can see down here, volume is picking back up to the upside. So more people were interested in potentially buying this dip than selling it and completely, you know, causing IWM to roll over here. So those are my thoughts. I do think the bull flag is still intact. This is not a violation of that. You know, until maybe we violate this low and pull back or break this support trend line, that would be a different story. But for now, this still does look good for consolidation here. And, you know, as we know, picture perfect in IWM as it has been in the past, it does tend to like to just, you know, flag and then see a move higher. You know, it just happened. It's happened over and over again here. And I don't think that this is any different until the market wants to tell us so. So moving into those four trade ideas now, the first two are going to be the short ideas. So if the market does decide to roll over into the end of the week, then these would be plays that I would potentially be looking out for. The first one's here on Humana, right? And obviously we have a flush point forming at the 370-370 mark, right? We have clear lower highs developing, call it a descending triangle, call it a flush point, whatever you want. If the market rolls over, I think that this one is susceptible for a snap here and definitely a move lower. And the next short idea is going to be on ANTM for Anthem. And what we see here is almost the same exact setup. I mean, right, we have a flush point at the 287.75 area. We clearly have our lower highs coming in. Uh, the cherry on top on this particular setup is the inverted hammer. We also have the 200 SMA there. So if all of that super support breaks, then yes, definitely expecting a larger move to the downside here in Anthem. Now, if the market decides to rally and you know we push up and out of or try to uh, that consolidation range that we just talked about, then look at the world's most expensive burrito, none other than Chipotle, right? This is a viable pullback in my estimation for a few reasons. We set a new all-time high, and if we check out the support trend line, we're probably right at it. I haven't drawn it in officially, uh, but we're very close, okay? So if, if we were to see any continued pullback into the support trend line, or if this is kind of it, as noted by that lower wick, we have the 50 SMA here as well. I do think this is a viable pullback here in the world's most expensive burrito, Chipotle. And then the last Last trade idea is on silver. Okay, so you may be thinking, well, if the market rallies, wouldn't that be a bad thing for silver? Well, not necessarily. They have sort of been decoupled, uh, at least recently, anyways. If the market rallies, maybe silver gets a break over the 25.55 mark, in which case there is a gap above to be filled, just about to, let's see, what's the low of that candle? Around 26.10. Okay, after that, again, very little market structure in this section of the chart. I don't see why it couldn't continue to chug higher on the break of 25.55. So with everything.
everything that we've talked about, again, SPY probably sideways into the end of the week. You have some extremes, right? If we start to take out those highs, certainly look for that, um, you know, all-time high set in the pre-market that we talked about. And anything lower, we talked about buying this potential market structure here. Uh, we went over those four trade ideas. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, feel free to let me know down below in the comments section. And uh, with that, I wish to see you and hope to see you in the weekly watch list on Sunday afternoon.